Afternoon all. Cold as a witch's ferret outside. Minus three. As you can see, there's no sun on the greenhouse. We are just gone five past one afternoon. Because that's north facing, meaning the sun's too low. Another month or so is going to be uh, up we get some sun on. But in here, it's too bad. This end is the cold end of the greenhouse. I've got my exhibition shallots. Uh, pickling shallots, plus all the couple of bits. So that end is being kept at 50 minimum, which is 10. 10 inch money. So if I take my little door off, Cumbrian Sammy Cross pot leaks. I've got a few of them going, half a dozen this year. That's for our show. I've got Blanche leaks, and I'm doing a couple of trials again. I've also got my compost mix in here, meaning the compost is warm. If it was out here, it'd be too cold for the seedlings or whatever. So that's nice and warm as well. Watering, <coughs> greenhouse temperature at 50. Luckily, I've got an electric coming up here. So I've got a heater down here. Can you get down here? Mate? I've got a heater at the back, and that, that's a good one. And from screw fix. Plus, I've got my kettle if I need hot water to top my bucket of water, which I got there, rain water. If that's too cold as well, then I'll put a drop of uh, hot water in, mix that up. Always got a foliar feed on the groove. We'll uh, cover that later, but I'm a great believer in foliar feeding while I'm on it. The smaller the spray, the mist. The, the better it's going to hang on to the leaf. Right, I'll go through my pots first, then I can get them out of the way, then I've got more room. But we'll, we'll, we'll come back onto them later. We'll see easier to get them out of the road. I'll start everything off in a propagator or in plastic pot. You'll get these from Wilco, pound shop, anywhere. They come in hundreds, usually about a, a quid if you can get them cheap. But I'm cutting the bottoms off. For drainage, I just cut two sides off, then you've got the drainage in there. I start everything off in plastic drinking cups in the cold end of the greenhouse or the warm end. If I was to plant straight out an onion set, even if they are overwintering, I got a chance of rotting off, and then I've lost that space. If I start everything off in the greenhouse, I'm only going to put out established, healthy plants. The weakens are going to go straight in the bin. Meaning he's been pricked out. <laughs> Once he gets root bound, luckily with these plastic pots as well, you can see the roots down the bottom. So you ain't going to upend him and disturb him. The next pot he goes, say he was an onion, he would go into that pot. This is from the pan shop as well. Ideal and perfect. Next size up. The next one up to him is a two litre pot, which is that one. Might be called a rose pot and all, I don't know. Sometimes you can get away with putting onions out from that. But if it's a, an heavy onion, or one for show, then uh, that's a three litre pot, that'll end up in that one. But normally, I can get away with that, with that eight ounce onions, all them, for the show. Helping the plants out, meaning I've got my wires. Wilco flog this B and Q. They flog the wire by the roll. I need two lengths, the small and the long, which are them two there. So the first, once he starts going over, i.e., with the weight of their leaves on the top, then I'll put a wire in. Once he starts getting a few more leaves in, I'll put the next one up as well, which is longer. You can use anything to bend them, I use a pit stick. Just bend the top round, cut them off the length. Once you've got the length right, turn him round and then cut him off. And I do a dollar for them, as you can see there. I've got two small and the long ones. Right, let's get them out of the room. So that's me onions with Aaron. With the pot leaks, which is up the back there. They started off in drinking cups again. Sizes for them. That'll be the next size up. 
No bloody size on that one. But you can see it's only about a half inch jump. And then we've got this one, which is uh, 14 volume, five inch or one liter. And then we're just going up and normally for me exhibition, which is in branch leagues, semi pot leagues, they go in these pots, which are five litre. Right. Right, let's see them out of the room. Give myself some room. When they are in these large pots, I use the canes, green stick canes. Some of these are 18 inches two foot but you can get them in different sizes we also get these onion clips which go around there and they hold the plant up upright once they get big in the pot you can put a cane either side open them up and use the two canes and they grow through them but then we good travel as well plug them down our trading shed anything uh, that's good for the gardener i buy bulk Plug it down our trading shed. Keep me prices under Wilco. That means <coughs> I get me customers. Right, when I do my talks, obviously, because uh, I've got a bad memory anyway, but when, we, when I do my talks, my slides, me A to memory, meaning, and I can talk straight the way through, meaning I don't mean miss nothing out. For me to be doing this this afternoon, I don't want to miss nothing out again, so I've wrote everything down. So, if I start looking uh, at my notes, you know why. Well, the first one we're going to cover is carrots. I had uh, seven queries on these. This was the main one, what people are having um, difficulty with. With carrots, obviously, most people grow them outside. But a uh, carrot root fly is a pain in the carrot, I suppose. There's that many aphids about now, and they've taken everything off us. Years ago, we used to have bromophos. Then the EC took the goodies out and they called it chlorophos. Anything goes out, uh, if I'm going to ban anything, I'll buy it bulk. So I can still uh, use it for a while. So I've still got some chlorophos. But uh, there ain't much nowadays <coughs> which the gardener can get hold of. There, there are baddies out there, but I like to look after my saw. I don't like to use them unless I've got to. Deep cleans are good and I'll get that off eBay. Just bung that in, but that jobs a lot of aphids. So your carrots outside, if you grow them outside, the only way to get around the, the fly is to grow under Enviromesh. Enviromesh is expensive, but once you've got it, it's going to last for moons. The only thing with Enviromesh, this I found this, whether it's for eating or for exhibition carrots. If I want some carrots, up to, say to eat, I lift the environment as soon as I touch a carrot you disturb the sense the scent and if you've got an edge row somewhere nearby and the fly sense it is going to go straight in exactly the same as leaks with the um, allium leaf miner are going to get in there which I've had happen so I've had it even growing under the environment then I thought about I did it with the kids up the school use a florist bucket and that's the only way I grow them now a local forest at the top of the collie gate. I must have had 300 off these by now. That's for me, myself, the kids up the school, plus the plots down there on the site for people learning difficulties. They either bin these or return them, but they are ideal depth for growing carrots. This is cold greenhouse, cold tunnel, porch if you can get away with it, if your missus lets you, or your hubby, whoever's growing. But uh, you can get away with it with a cold greenhouse. Sun sunlight obviously is good. Multi-purpose compost. What is my mixture? So I've got my compost in here. <coughs> it is nice and warm. This is a Umax bag. But I've been trialling clover as well. We're sticking to clover now. I'm keeping that for our trading sheds. We used to have heading compost, but uh, the new gaffer, the log supplier, mucked me about, so, so I'm friends like that I don't need. 
Right, multi-purpose compost looks when you open them up. It's a good brew clover. The lumps in, all I do is rub the lumps out. But in there, there ain't enough for me to hang on to moisture, warmth and oxygen. So what I use for everything is vermiculite. You can get perlite, which is the white stuff, or the vermiculite. We'll go flog this and all. But uh, vermiculite hangs on to moisture, warmth and oxygen, which is what the roots want, and it's what I want. So obviously I'm going to mix this with a multi-purpose compost to give me that. So you've got your vermiculite mixed in with it. This one I did earlier. <laughs> I filled him up to about an inch and a half away from the top. Feed wise, because <coughs> I tried all these with the kids up at school, if you work for them, it's going to work for me. Don't forget, I'm only eating these. And I was down Wilco yesterday, and I've got all the seeds out. All the onion sets, potatoes and everything. That's why I can go through these. Thing is with these pots, I haven't firmed that down or nothing. All I'm going to do is so thinly. That is it. Don't put another pinch on for good luck. Good luck, my Irish, that ain't gonna work. If you're so thinly, you can pull them out, finger and thumb either side. If you're so too thickly, I'm gonna scratch together different, whatever. So thinly. If you've got a big family, do two pots. I'm now gonna cover him. That's it, that's enough. How do I firm him down? Like that. <coughs> Wait to him. This is a bit early for me, but uh, it's just to show you what to do. So I might put this. I'll leave him out here. Right? Obviously, I'm going to put a label in him so I know what he is. Just clear them off out the road. Be sure I am. Uh... Why do you grow indoors? Because it's multi-purpose compost. There's no acids in the soil that's going to mark the skins. Meaning the carrots that come out of here are going to be clean as a whistle. The skin's going to be thin. So if we pretend <coughs> this pot, the carrots from up here, you don't see anyway because the, the shoulders stick out of it. If I, because there's only me and the missus normally now at home. I don't, I don't need much, so I don't grow them outside or whatever. So if I want five carrots up for dinner, I'm going to water that half hour before I pick them. Then I'm going to go up, biggest ones, and just go either side, and they pull out clean as a whistle. Just top them, and that's it. No need, well, you give them a quick squeal, but there's no need to scrub them, peel them, and nothing. And they taste like carrots are supposed to taste. That's how I do my carrots now. That's the best way. If you do outside, you've got to grow under environment, but you've got the chance of the flies still getting in. But if you can get away with it, cold greenhouse, do that uh, 12 months of the year. Right, done that one. The next one on the list was onions. Four people asked about these. No longer bother us, birds pull them out. I've never known a bird pull an onion out. What they mind about, if you get an onion set and they start growing. Or you got dried tops on. Birds are after straw for making the nest and they pull them out. No, they don't. They might lift the cells out of the cells. <coughs> Another advantage of storing everything off in a cold greenhouse. Or a lean to, if you can get away with it, whatever. And done that one. Right. Show you what I do with my onions. Full side seed tray. Put your bit of paper underneath so the compost and the way to dog out. Well, it will go out the arse, the way to will. But watch the trays when you get them. If you go down Wilco, which I'll say Wilco because that, that's our nearest place for all the garden crap, don't get a, a chip. It's still solid, but the 15 tray insert, you don't fit in there, meaning that's, that's about as level as a duck's 
back leg. Get them so they fit snugly in there, which he does. And then, is one I made earlier. <clears throat> 15 tray inserts. I can move them around the greenhouse easily, wherever I want to go. Once again, filling him up. Knock him down. That's how I get him level. I don't put him down. When you saw this with the kids at school again, then they used to ram it down and give the onion set a chance to get going. Well, I got these yesterday. Luckily, this is the only one they got left. Uh, Carmen, red set, a couple of started spurting. The thing is, with these, you've got to check them out. So. Where's that tray? Tip them all out. Sutton's about six years ago come out with a onion set red ray. They were superb for exhibition, for keeping and for cooking. And then uh, as I used to promote them, I'm all my talks. And obviously they got that many people asking for them. And then got enough stock. So they start dishing out crap like most seed people do companies so i've gone off them now what i'm doing the old skins i'm rubbing them off meaning as you rub the old skins off you can tell if they're soft or not if there are any soft ones here these soft as a badger's tadger he's going to go straight in the bin which has just gone in so all I'm after is a nice solid onion set I mean the skins they gotta come off but most of them rub off anyway so all I'm planting is nice solid sets he's a bit dodgy on the neck you can see he's gone wash it up if I was to plant something like them, or a weak plant, or a set outside, if we had a good frost, which we've had lately, like if these are over wintering onions that have been planted out a couple of weeks ago, probably a month ago, if we get a decent frost, we had a minus four last night, we ain't had that for years. In fact, we ain't had bloody snow for a couple of years. If you've got a weak plant, he's going to get a check in growth if you don't die. Meaning, the strongest ones go when I get planted out. Don't forget, mine have got a good root structure on them anyway, so when they get out, they're stronger and healthy plants. So that's why I only want strong and healthy. I always do more than what I want, than the weakens. I either give them away or bin them. So these lot now, pretend we've sort, well, sorted this lot out. All I'm doing, it don't matter whether them small, large, or whatever. If paid for them, use them. All I'm doing is pushing them up shoulder height, no deeper. I do this with the garlic as well. I could cut him off, might pull him off, yeah. If it's a bit later getting these from Wilco, and the, the root, I've started rooting out of the bottom, it still don't matter as long as I'm solid. Just try them in the packet while they're there. But uh, just bung them in like that, then obviously give them a good watering. I use rainwater with everything. There's that much crap in tap water to look after our teeth. It's not going to kill the plants, but it's going to knock them back a bit. If you use rainwater, ideal. Bung that one out of the road. Them can go in the coal end of the greenhouse as well. Which is another good thing if you've got no heat. Onions. <laughs> Done that. Right, brassicas, next one. This is about a uh, cabbage. There's also kale, collies. And it attacks with aphids. Uh, 
<coughs> I'll start off in the propagator again. Or if you've got heat, like over there, it'll be a drinky cup. You've then got to eat your greenhouse. Then obviously you've got to use your propagator. Because I'd, <coughs> I'm only growing for the family, not the street. If I want six plants, which is the most I want, this is a cauliflower, cabbage, uh, whatever, kale, spinach. All I'm showing is six seeds. I want four. You're going to get four out, that's six. Meaning there's no waste. What I've learned to do with um, <coughs> all these now, well most of them, except the cauliflower, because you want the one head. But if it's uh, curly kale, spinach, uh, spring cabbage, dry on, love them. I like a green cabbage, green leaf, not a white leaf. We should have white cabbage at school. <coughs> Once the plant's growing, I take the outside leaves off and use them for a meal. That plant carries on growing. If I've got a big cabbage out, there's only me and the missus, normally. The freezer's full. It's going to be a waste. So I just take the outside leaves off. And I do that with curly kale. And then I finished the last one last week. Uh, <coughs> spinach anything like that just take the outside leaves off that plant is going to carry on growing because he's, he's got to throw young so he's going to have his life then he'll go to seed but while he's there just take the outside leaves off don't waste the plant it's, the new thing we had this year well we had it last year down our site was a flea beetle somewhere else well pain in the iris and they, they devastated me, me uh, brassicas Never seen them before, never heard on them. Once we got them, and I looked at it on the internet, we, I've been around for bloody moons. But until you get it, you don't look into it. And there's that many of them, when you get close to them, they all disperse and they make a row. And anyway, I got stuff to job them, and it does. But you have to send away for it. It's like a, a talcum powder, and you blow it, blow it. It does work, but something else. Cauliflower. <coughs> Same as brassicas. Also, try not, try not to let them dry out. Because then they'll have a chance of going to seed or splitting or whatever. With a with a good soil underneath it or a raised bed, then you're going to have better roots, which I've just mentioned. Uh, meaning you've got a sturdy and stronger plant, and he should give you a nice curd. So just just look after them. Give me a bit of muck under them. The end of the season before or whatever. They give it a stronger and healthier plant. Right, leeks. I used to have a leek bed on the plot, which people, the elders used to have years ago, to start the leeks off. This is for eating, obviously, Musselboro, Wilco. I try these with the kids, and uh, well, I, I do it myself, and I still use them now, Musselboro. I used to have a leek bed, just sow one drill. Once that was big enough, uh, April, May, then I, I'd take them out if the weather was alright, and then I'd plant them out individually. I'm going to spark it all. Because of the allium leaf miner, the fly, which is active in the March, beginning of April, and uh, September, beginning of October, it is a pain in the iris. So now, because the fly used to get in before you had even planted them out, so now I start them off <coughs> in the pots. Which is uh, I bumped him over here. Which of these? It's easy to do in pots. You can either do a two or a three litre pot. I do about six of these end of February. Compost goes in again, up to just under a rim, and then thinly, so you lay a leek seed on top, covering again level it and then water it bung your ferret in and it's usually end of feb beginning of march i do these these are also in the cold end of the greenhouse and uh, it's usually june when the our gardening club as they bring them by first thursday in june and i'll take five of these down there and they're up here pencil thickness ready to plant out meaning <coughs> if i'm in here Look, well, hopefully the fly air got in, which it ain't uh, the last couple of years. I'll plant out then, 
but once again it's got to go under environment because of the alien leaf miner and everything else is ferreting about uh, if you've got a garden like my next door neighbour here there's, there ain't, there's, there's only me and him I think for a good area who don't grow or, or only grow veg meaning he's well all his stuff is, is clean as a whistle every year there's, there's no more veg about so the aphids from them don't come and job is but on the allotment side most people have got leaks in and uh, Green fly, whatever, the fly are active, they're a pain in the Irish. But that's the only way I start my leaks now in, in the pot in the cold end of the greenhouse. And you do this now and start them off now. So when you, you plant your leaks out, which for me is early June, that, that's, that's early enough. There's uh, quite a few people who want, want to be early with everything. Nature will win every time. If you've got a good, strong, healthy plant, you plant him out a bit later than everybody else. Yours will catch up and take over. I'll prove that. But it's up to you. But obviously we leaks again because of that alum leaf miner. I've got to go under environment if outside. I won't get away with it up here. We're under the tunnel. But uh, down the plot. I've had the fly again this year. So next year. That was inside me. Wooden structure with scaffolding and anything on. So next year there'll be environment inside one of my tunnels over there and if I get it with that using the environment machine and then leaks them out the window or just buy them from middle right next one sprouts um, can only grow little ones right sprouts this year <coughs> I had my plants from Lidl I don't know what the name was in fact I, I had um, spring cabbage there was sprouts and, and curly kale, or my curly kale, I had from them as well. It's, saves you on heat, saves you mucking about buying compost and all this crap, because you, you got the plants straight away. And obviously by the time they flog them, it's, it's warmed up a bit, so you can get away with them. Um, Same as with sprouts again, same as brassicas, if you do start them off as seedlings and you pot it on, then plant them deeper on the next pot on, so you get the, the roots out of the stem as well. Right, wind rock, or a, a, that's what caused blown sprout, if you get a sprout and it blows, I mean you still hate it, but people do like to see it, you get wind rock. Anything I put out, all my sprouts, they've got one cane. I use uh, six foot canes on mine, meaning the cane goes in a foot, foot and a half, and that ain't going to do nothing. It's got to be later on when there's a bit of weight on that sprout. So when the sprout starts growing up, you tie up and you keep it nice and straight or straighten as you get it, and there's no rocking or no, no anything movement. <laughs> this crap about, well, it's a crap, but. Uh, I've never had to do it. When you plant summer out, you've got to heal them in. Never had to do that. Whether it's because I've got a good brew because I'm all raised beds and, and the roots dig in the cells, they're, they're going to get a nice, firm stand up. They don't need uh, helping out. I mean, I'm going to firm them in with my hands, but not with a heel. I've never had to heal anything in. When they are growing, once they get cernoid, once they're up here, then I'll chop the tops off. This is uh, end of October, early November. Because them, the, the, the tops, so the top six inches, sprouts are just forming. You will never ever get anything off them. The plant will be finished by the time you get some off them. So instead of all the grub and nourishment going to them lot, if you chop them off, it'll then go into the sprouts itself and give you a better. Because I've chopped the top off, the other leaves I've kept on photosynthesis sunlight goes through the leaves gives a plant energy somebody put on the one of the groups a couple of weeks ago take all your leaves off your sprouts well, 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 well you can take them off but I've trialed and errored so I, I've done it if it worked for me then I'll pass it on and that's what I'm doing you've got to leave some leaves on there 
Uh, what else can I tell you about them? We've not done that. Pigeons are a pain in the Aris. This is the first year I haven't netted. For some reason, I, it just completely... I thought I'd write nothing down on the calendar. Bloody calendar would be huge. I forgot all about it. Because uh, we've got SAS pigeons, they can come down like helicopters. And they can land on top and balance and yump. But uh, I got away with it in the sense... When you get a sprout and it's forming at the top, when the caterpillars are about, butterflies, you have to open up because there will be caterpillars in there. How the hell they get inside there? Well, I'm pretty SA, so I So I'll look in there. But I, I I haven't netted this year and I've got away with it. I've had some decent sprouts, so, so I'll just look out for that. If you don't like using uh, insecticides or whatever, just use soapy water. That's all, you could, that's all I could use up at school with the kids, but you've got to spray it every other day or something it's just gonna get washed off or whatever with the sprouts this year <coughs> all i needed was two sprouts this year that's that's for uh, that's looked after us as soon as the sprout is big enough take him off start picking as soon as they've got a decent size and buddy pick them ate them he's got to carry on growing don't forget he's got to survive so he'll throw all the grub into the next ones so i've had two plants uh a week before christmas Cut the one off, secateurs, about six inches above ground level. Because the secateurs wouldn't go any, cut it off any thicker. Hung him upside down and hung him up in the garage. Dark, cold, and that sprout will last for a month, over a month. It will stay nice and firm. I've done this with other veg and with the cabbages. Just hang them upside down with the red cabbage or green cabbage. This is a whole cabbage. Leave the roots on as well and hang him up and he will stay fresh for quite a while. I took the roots off my sprouts because that was that long. It, it'd be uh, halfway down there, what's it? But I'll look after them. Uh, while we're on that with it, somebody's saying taking, taking the leaves off the sprouts. Also, about a month ago, somebody asked about tomatoes in the greenhouse, about removing the leaves on tomatoes. And they say, yeah, uh, in the end of August, September, they, they take all the leaves off. And just leave the top ones on the new growth. Gordon Penny. Leave them on, you've got to. Right, done that one. Apples, somebody. This that the zaphid, scab, brown rot, honey fungus. Apples are, well, like anything. The summit that's going to affect everything that you do. I've got a. I've used winter taros, codling moth traps, and grease bands. I've had them. I've got a top water and bottom water. And I've, I've used them for bloody moons. The last few two years, I've used winter taros, codling moth traps. This is the last year I've used them because I'm still getting the the damage by the insects. So, but because I get enough fruit, clean fruit anyway. I mean, I don't want everyone nice and clean. I just want enough for me to exhibit and to eat, and and that's what I'm getting. So I'm I'm now just gonna I'm gonna scrub around everything, grease bands a lot, because I don't work anyway. So um, um, um uh, the only thing I spray <coughs> a lot. Well, I'm gonna start doing it again this year because uh, the last couple of years I had time. Is a foliar feed with my compost tea. If you make good compost, you can make comp compost tea out of it. This will be covered in me book that's coming out, Compost King, shortly, another week or say two weeks or something. But it should be out by then. If you make good compost and make compost tea, then be doing it the stage for bloody moons. You put it in a pair of tights because I don't know lumps in my water and that's when I get my foley feed out. You put an air stone underneath, oxygen, plug it in and that feeds. Put your molasses in which is your kickstart for your... Uh, if you do wine, you put uh, yeast in for your kickstart. This is me kickstart for my compost tea. You aerate your compost for 24 hours. And then when, when that's, when you take that out, you've then got a 10 to one ratio. Put waiter, one dollar by that to nine of water, rainwater. Because you use rainwater in this anyway. 
and the, the foliage, you can use it as a drench feed and as a foliar feed and that's what the farmers in the states now a load of them are doing is using compost tea and it works you don't need insecticides because after the second coating spray wise it covers the plant itself keeps the aphids away so i'm going to start doing that regular next year well i've already done one here last week i'm, I'm eating little chaps so them will be good but uh, everything on the allotment of the garden in the greenhouse where it's all everything gets sprayed once a week obviously when the sun's got off it or before the sun comes out <sighs> radish if you're so indoors thinly in these tubs again cold greenhouse windowsill at home multi-purpose compost which me which we have vermiculite you ain't gonna eat that many if you have used two pots because outside it's pot lugs the slugs well there's bloody everything about either but a uh, french breakfast when i used to grow them that's all i used to grow you know i did well with them but that was in the tubs again but now there's only me and the missus we don't uh, use them also with radish <coughs> When you get your packet, so at the depth it says on the packet. If it's only deep at all above, then that's how they're going to topple over or be too high up, whatever. <coughs> right, so I'm going to add on. If the people ain't got a greenhouse garden as they get into it or whatever, if they start, somebody, my niece come round a couple of weeks ago and they give me some uh, plants and they was leggy as hell. And the mate is starting off on a Sunday windowsill. As, once again it's a gardener but it's not a gardener in the sense that she ain't got a greenhouse she doesn't know about potting them on it's the wrong time to, to grow whatever meaning if you ain't got a greenhouse you ain't got heat the only heat you've got is what's inside the house you can do stuff on the sunny window still but when it gets to a certain height it needs pricking out then you, you've still got to look after that plant or it will go leggy as hell so just uh you can have a propagator to start them off with but once you've potted them on you've still got to look after them even if it's a cold greenhouse tunnel or whatever but usually if you have got the bug gardening wise you're going to get a greenhouse or a tunnel right if i've just planted <coughs> say four brassicas in there they spring onion i've come through the, the seed leaves or the fur leaves you get on them the next leaves are called the true leaves when you prick some at house get the fork straight underneath it if you want to get as much root out as you can you don't want to bust that root off then you hold him by the, the seed leaf and transfer him into another one so I will have another plastic cup compost make me all then I'll put that seedling into there Can you focus in on there, Ben? There's my plastic drinking cup on the right. Once he starts getting root bound, I've got to pot him on. That pot, compared to that pot, is a raised bed. That's why I'm all raised beds. The raised bed, you've got more, good, better brew underneath, meaning the roots are going to go down. Give it a better root structure so you've got more what you got on top you've got up there same as a tree when i pot on this is with peppers tomatoes uh, or brassicas that gap there when i pot him on he'll be potted on to the first leaf so that stem you've buried you will within a week 10 days you'll have roots coming out of that stem meaning you've got twice as many roots now is what you normally add and I do that with everything so the next pot on from him will be them I think last year uh, yeah yeah New Year's Eve so this year I had my sprouts from Lidl save me bloody messing about they've already got them but normally it would go from that into that one and that's where my sprouts went out out of them last year so you get more roots doing it that road. There's loads of things. <coughs> These are all of my slides, but obviously you can all see them. And on the slides, the, there's a, one with a chilli pepper in there. 
and you can see the roots coming out already at the base of that stem because when I water them obviously the stem gets wet and the roots have started coming down already nature get the best out on it right spuds had these from Wilco again yesterday as you see them on a quid you get five seed taters I did you keep my own spuds from the year before this is about four or five years ago and I put them in I've got a good crop but not as good as crop as if I'd have used proper seed taters uh, Casablanca Catriona I used last year from Wilco I tried them on the kids up the school and the taste was superb both but uh, they'd run out down Wilco that ain't been out long so I had a kestrel so what do I do you can either bung them in an egg box Yeah, you know, the chap's already telling you do something with me. He started spurting already. These have only just come out in bloody Wilco. Okay? Use another month of time. These spurts will be about half inch. Raw eye sticking uppermost. You can either put them in egg boxes like that, which is ideal, because you've got air movement all the way around and not touching each other. Or you can help them out which is what I'm going to do right let's get a good one that's a good size pot for him to go in so bung a bit of compost under him he's about central in the pot that's uh, depth wise and size wise Right, that will do him. All I'll do now is give him a waiter with my little ferret and I'll put him exactly the same again, cold end of the greenhouse. So I'll put him there, keep an eye on him. When we do when we do get the sun, then that side obviously we'll get it. Because the sun now is up there, we'll get him rid. So you can either keep these in a cold greenhouse, but frost free, it's got to be frost free obviously. You can say we've had a minus four, so they might have to go, you don't get away with it, bung them in on, on the sunny windowsill, we you ain't too bad, frost wise, cold greenhouse. Just keep there looking after them, uh, out of direct sunlight, so this side of the greenhouse would be ideal for them, light and airy, air movement you've got to have a bit of. So that's the taters. I always start them off. <coughs> Once it starts growing, you see, you see the green coming out, plus you'll see the roots coming out the bottom, meaning, well, well it'd it be nice and uh, solid anyway. I usually water two days after, I can turn them upside down, then they'll collapse. Just check the roots. If you need potting on, that is the next pot size up. So that one will go in there. That is what he'll probably come out of. If he does go loop, if we get some good weather, then it might go into that pot. Right. Last year, they come straight out of these and they got planted straight out, out of this. Meaning it's an established plant. It's got a good root structure on it. He ain't got a battle or struggle once it gets planted out. So that's how I do my taters. That's how I've done it the last few years. Right, foley feed wise, oh hang on, Leslie, white flying compost, I rest that on and all. If you get white flying compost, it's usually too wet, uh, so I'll put a, a bit more uh, carbon in it, ripped up egg, egg boxes, little rolls, or shredded paperback, paper, ideal. I'll just leave the lid, lid off for, for a couple of hours, and they should clear off. Um, Somebody put on a couple of days ago. They fill that with compost and then planted whatever they, or sown, planted whatever they want. To get them out now, this is how I started off as well. My onion sesame first lot I did was in these. But now to get them out, 
I've got to squeeze that and, and try and get that one plant out, meaning you're going to knacker this tray instead of. If you use a plastic drinking cup like I do, that's going to last your moon because you ain't going to knacker it up. Meaning, don't plant straight. Well, you can do, you can do what you want, but that's why I don't. Uh, mist spray I've mentioned, Thalia feeds. The smaller the mist, the better, and it's gone and gone. When I do my talks, I take different stuff to flog to make a bit more pocket money. And one of them is mycorrhizal fungi. I've got another trial doing with them again. If I'm planting a, a seedling out, leak, well, whatever. The only cook up I made with this using mycorrhizal fungi. It's, it's got to touch the roots to work, you only need a pinch, and they go, phew, half your roots come off and you have double the root structure. But they, all my stuff grew that well. I run out of room in the greenhouse. So I don't use this now until I plant out. But I flog that on my talk. We flog that down the training shoe. All my stuff I buy bulk, me and I can flog it chip. And I also dish out these, because <coughs> all my talks, I, I mentioned at the end that I'm a great believer in foliar feeding. One different feed a week. Epsom salts is one. Can I fed it on the evening? Then Yolok can freeze it so you can copy it. But uh, Epsom salts, beautiful stuff. Liquid fish, if you can get hold of it, I'll flog that and all. Charge, which is beetle dung. Maxi crop, you can get that from Wilco anyway. Maxi crop, anything that's seaweed based is good for the gardener. Beautiful stuff. Weekly spray. Don't forget to use it rainwater. Uh, seed wise, select seeds, tough ball onion, them are a good one for the eight ounce class. If you want a good size carrot, good size, a, a good decent carrot, good for showing as well. Sweet candle and the leeks, well sealing, which is what my uh, blanched leeks are up there. And the new Brussels sprout he had out. This is my Davies took the company out. He ain't gonna rip nobody off. I'm trying to uh, Churchill this year. Do well with them. But uh, usually just just eating stuff. I get my stuff from Wilco. That's all the crap on there. I think I've covered everything now. Troops. <sighs> oh, let's do. Hope you've enjoyed it. Hope you've learned some it and. Uh, this up next year gonna be better than this one. This year wore a write off but it was a pain in the arrow. Happy New Year. Cheers people. <laughs>